I think it's something like 0.03% of all philanthropic giving goes to Native-led organizations. And, and last year, over 80% of our funding went to Black and Native-led organizations. So we feel it's something that is, in terms of equity and justice, it's something that needs to be corrected. And this is one of the ways that we're trying to do that. Wayfair Foundation is a spiritually rooted, justice-centered foundation with the overarching goal of contributing to bringing about peace and unity to the world. So we focus on race unity, gender equality, religious harmony, helping to eliminate extremes of wealth and poverty, empowering youth, embracing the arts, and universal education. There's kind of a natural fit with a lot of Native-led organizations, which is one of our priorities, because a lot of Native cultures already believe in, a, in oneness, the oneness of humanity, and that's one of the founding beliefs of the Baha'i Faith and of Wayfair. So a lot of the organizations that we visited in South Dakota, they already have this central belief that we're all one and we're all one people. We work with organizations that they're primarily grassroots. And so what happens is that the community said, here's an issue that we see and we want to do something about it. We know that a lot of times philanthropy thinks that they're the ones that know what that should look like. Things should scale this way, things should be measured this way, et cetera. We believe in the nobility of every human being and their right and responsibility to identify that for their own community. The folks on the ground know what they're doing and they know how to build community and they know how to solve their problems. And we have a resource that we can offer that supports them in solving these problems and building community. We have access to so, like material resources, but the people that we're working with, the people that we're partnering with, have access to a whole history of knowledge and wisdom that is new to us and that we feel needs to be elevated and promoted. Their focus on spirituality, justice, community building, and oneness is something that we as an organization want to learn from and share with others. For example, just with the Native American-led organizations that we work with, we have organizations that are based in Maine, the Pacific Northwest, Arizona, and they're all working on similar issues and they're all facing similar issues. So part of our job is to connect them in a network. And the way our partners have termed it is that it's essentially almost an indigenous family. We continue to do a lot of work as individuals on the team, as team members and within the community to learn and to try to build those relationships. And that is part of that unity is that healing um, and that justice to, to start to change the behavior of at least us as a philanthropic organization to again build those bridges of what unity looks like. When we become unified, when we when we give up something for something greater, we're not giving up our identity. You know, in fact, we are embracing all of those beautiful parts of ourselves, our culture, and we're we're contributing parts of ourselves. And when we all contribute those parts of ourselves, it actually creates something beyond what we could have imagined. We seek out organizations that are spiritually rooted, but we also try to be spiritually rooted ourselves. So one of the ways that translates is we're constantly seeking to ground ourselves in humility, uh, love, and justice. And I think what that does is it kind of displaces us. It, it doesn't center our ego or our money or our ideas of, of how things should happen. So the intersection of spirituality and justice has really taken on a whole new meaning for me after our site visit. I had a little bit more of a theoretical understanding, but one of the things that, that was made concrete when we visited our partners in South Dakota was that it's completely intertwined. They could not practice their spirituality legally uh, up until like the 1970s when it was made legal by Congress. And it's harder to think of a graver injustice than that, that people can't practice their own spirituality. And 
it seems clear that we have a duty to, to help in that process.